Did you guys have lunch? Did what? Did you and Janet go to lunch? No. I'm Beth Coy and I live out near Hayesville. Cool. And I'm Chase Saba. Um, I live at near Georgia's Tavern. Great. Great. You guys live in the beautiful country out here. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think the um, first thing is uh, to to look at our minutes from last month. And um, Christy did get them to us. She said she apologized for them being so late. Um, she literally has had three surgeries in the last three days. They're outpatient, but they're not pleasant. So, yeah. And she, she had said to me yesterday that she thought she'd try to come. <laughs> I was like, you, you've got to be kidding me. And she, she did call today ready. and say, no, I think I can't be super right. woman, so she's not going to be here. But um, she did send us the minutes, so I don't know if everybody had had a chance to take a look at them. I did. Okay. I did not have a chance. You didn't have a chance. Yeah, okay. I wasn't here. I this do you do you I want us to wait till next time to approve them or I think that would probably be yeah, best. If you haven't had a chance been to read them posted yeah. for the public. Either. Yeah. So they um, she did a nice job, but take a look at those. Okay. Um, I, this, would, I, would, I did see that Sharita and Jamie are listed on here as attendees and they were not here. And they're not a, they're not attend they were they were at that last meeting but they were sitting in the back. Okay. They they or I don't know that Sharita or I don't think either of them were at Rockville. Okay, I thought Jay, I thought Sharita was in Rockville. I don't think Jamie was. So we'll check. That's a good thing to check on. Okay. Okay. I will get them. All right. We'll check on those, but we will not approve these until next month. Okay. So. Okay. Um, what I thought. What I'd like for us to do today, we did some real good brainstorming this last time, and um, but what I thought I'd like to try to do is begin to build uh, a project plan for how we need to get this done. Um, I know that uh, we need to talk about the groups that we might want to work with. We need to talk in terms of um, identifying individuals from each of those groups. And rather than trying to build a massive um, committee, I, I think it would be good if we worked, um, worked with this as the core committee and then we worked with advisory groups from each of the different groups rather than um, trying to make this a massive group itself. Sometimes if you get it too big, nothing gets done. You know, it, it just gets, gets unwieldy. So um, looking at who from those different groups that we identify might be individuals um, for these different advisory groups, and then dis define the possible tools for collection of information and sources for tools. And Tom, I'm looking at you for your expertise on that from the last time. I know we, we used surveys. I know we used um, some focus groups. And you know there there are all kinds of different tools that we can use, but I think that um, you know we need to we need to be looking at what what some of those tools might be, and if there may be additional tools that have come along with as technology grows. So, and then what I'd like to do once we've kind of talked through those three things uh, and get some good notes on those, then what I'd like to do is literally lay out. Um, you know, if we say that we're going to take a year, lay out 12 months worth of, uh, of um, sheets so we can start saying, okay, if we're going to do a, a survey, we have to develop the survey at this point. This point we need to make sure the survey gets distributed. This point we need to make sure that the survey is, um, has, um, has been tallied and so forth so that we start seeing the flow of how this development is going to go um, so that we're, we're planning ahead for those things that might come up that might change that timeline. So that, but we need to start with the timeline. Um, and one of the things, as I went through, um, I have to apologize, I did not get 
I, I had all these good intentions of sitting down and reading both of these things before today. I have not, I have not gotten the two new documents read. I've read the one, the Library of Virginia. I, I, I had covered that one, but I haven't read the two new ones yet. So um, I don't think we're going to delve into them unless you, Tom, know of some things in there that we need to include in our discussion today. I think, I mean, I think they might more appropriately be used as you're going Sort going through true. the process, good. and you know, in many ways, good. Um, okay. But we we could talk about those if you were interested. Yes. If there was time. Yes. Okay. If we've got the time. I would like to do that. Um, what I did do is I went back through the um, different long-range planning reports that um, I had get you know had sent to you last time. I went back through those in detail this time rather than just kind of breezing over them. And there was one that I really like the approach that they took, and that's the Appomattox Regional Library System one. In that one, um, as they were beginning to do this, um, and I highlighted what they said, this is on page six of that one. Um, they said the goals would be achieved through their respective objectives and measured and reported to the Board of Trustees each October during the plan. Um, and then they said, rather than establish a fixed plan for a fixed number of years, the committee chose instead to set the plan period for only three years. However, the committee also determined to in, all, the committee also determined to encourage the board of trustees to reevaluate the goals and objectives each year, and consider a rolling plan. And I thought that to me sounds sounds like a really good way to go. Under a rolling plan, the board of trustees could determine a goal or an objective to be no longer relevant or obsolete and change the goal or objectives to meet the changing services. The initial objectives would met with measurable goals are, and then they started listing their um, goals and objectives. But I, I, and again, this is my own personal opinion, so I kind of need input from you all as to whether that, rather than making a five-year plan that says, you know, that we're, you know, when we get to this point, then we're going to start a new plan. But making this a, a growing plan that as each year, you know, we, we, as we finish one year and evaluate that and determine what needs to move forward, what's obsolete and so forth. In the meantime, then the next thing we would do is build the next year um, so that we would have three years out um, each time. And it would be a rolling uh, development. I don't, I'm, I'm open for. Well, I like the idea of, of a plan being kind of a living document where people don't complete the assignment and then put it on the shelf for five years. Because um, I think things are changing so quickly that, I mean, technology changing so quickly and um, it, I, I like that idea. If we have discrete goals, maybe each year, they would have to be yes. So they're yes. milestones, so you can't just keep kicking the can down the road. Right. As it's rolling. <laughs> I, I mean, which sure is easy can. to do. What was the month that they had listed? What was pardon? What was the month that they had listed for? They the have listed that each October. October. That they would go through the plan. And it, it doesn't have to be October for us. You know, we could look at what our overall plan looks like in the sense of when it, you know, when do we have a kind of, it's not a gap, but when do we have a chance that we could really put something like this in for a meeting? I mean, I think, I mean, I think the difficulty for that, I mean, it, I guess ideally it's sort of this living plan that continuously evolves, but you have to take the time to do that. And that's right. typically like, you know, where there is friction, if you will, in the process for whatever else is coming along. Um, I don't, I guess, I, I mean, however we end up wording that, I feel like that can be kind of, that could fit in at the, more towards the end of the process. It's, it's a good, kind of like a good bullet point, like that the intention is that it is continuously evolving, being reviewed. 
and I don't know if it makes it easier to do that if you're doing it more frequently, so you're taking smaller bites, if, like, if you don't need an hour in October, but you're doing it five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. Maybe even every other month? Focus on. We, you know, I mean, again, we, we can we yeah. can come up with what we want to do. This is what they came up with, and I thought this is, to me, this makes more sense than to, like you said, to build a five-year plan and it sits on the shelf for five years and then we come back. and And I don't know that that's, you know, what always happens. I have seen that happen, but um, you know, I don't know if that's something that we need to worry about. I just think, I, I think with the way things change nowadays so quickly, it would be good to do, make sure we do an evaluation every year of where we are and where we're headed and um, add to it if, you know, if we realize that we've set a goal and that goal is not you know, we don't have the ability to complete that goal in one year, then when we do that evaluation, we realize we need to extend that out. If we extend that out, is there another goal that we need to move? I mean, are we going to be overtaxing ourselves? So it's, it, it would take, you're right, Tom, it would take some work to do this, but I think that it would be, it would be more of a usable document, you know, that what, one that we're not just doing because we're supposed to do a five-year plan every every five years so any any other thoughts about well i also think that once we identify the groups and then the individual representatives from each group they'll start to take shape and then we can really zero in on a timeline once we have the players in place maybe, well, maybe it's just because i've done it but I, you know, I like being able to look back at our previous five-year plan and say, "Well, we did this, 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 and this." You know, because when you have a five-year plan, it doesn't necessarily mean that it sits on the shelf and you don't look at it. You know, That's you're what looking at it, it and you're happen. watching it yeah. and you're making sure that things get done. And you know, the library as a whole was moving toward it. So, but I'm sure that could happen either way. Well, I mean, I'm just looking at it from the perspective of the fact that the last one expired in 2019. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. So 2020. 2020. Okay. Um, so we haven't had a plan for five years. Well, um, it's really so, fiscal year 2020, which ended in 21. So but. four years. So at, at either which way, I mean, it's... Maybe if it's just reevaluated more frequently. Mm -hmm. I get what you're saying, though, because mm -hmm. it is good to look back and say, "Oh, we thought we were going to do this, this, and this, and we did yeah. achieve these." Things. Mm -hmm. I love being able to check things off, yeah, it's off nice the list. To know you, you did get them done. <laughs> yeah, that, that's very satisfying. Plan. <laughs> yeah. The timeline would also depend on the goals. We mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're not going to be able to get some stuff done. In three years, and, mm -hmm. and two months, or whatever, to evaluate it. So, well, if you, Something you can, but if you if you are, I would offer if you are checking everything off as being completed, you probably weren't stretching enough to to, to do it. Um, Just little bites. We actually did this, so we can do that. A is done, so now we can move to B, the kind of thing. But that's kind of what I'm thinking. But <laughs> I just have to see this kind of thing take form. Yeah, I think once we decide groups, like you said, and goals, we can. then I think we can. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't we then? The first thing that we'll do, let's talk about. And I've got chart paper that we can put this on. You know, we can write this up, and then we can talk in terms of, of who some of these people might be. That um, and. <laughs> I thought about this, and I, you know, I was going to put these on the wall and do the markers, and then I thought, <laughs> well, I have seen it stay on the wall, <laughs> so I did have. Um, I got post-it notes instead. We do have um, magnets in the class. Well, this uh, this is just if we if we do it on this, then I can take them home and start 
really putting it, you know, into a, a document. That she just means hang the paper yeah. on oh, the glass. Oh, hanging there, right there. Okay. 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 Over there if you want to okay. do that. Well, I can, I can do it right here. I've got post-it notes. Mm -hmm. So I can do, do the names and so forth on post-it notes as well, if that'll work. I, I hate to do clear over there. I don't know if see it on there. So maybe I'll just do it here. And we can talk about groups. Well, you've already mentioned good ones. Friends, friends of the library groups, really good. Okay. These parents group. Who's that? Just here. Is there a parents group? Well, there may be in the sense, I guess, if you know, you've got, um, read, you know, the reading for the small children or. Well, oh, just reaching out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We have story times and play groups, mm -hmm. and just yeah. reach out to the parents. To see okay, the so or just pick like care parents, guardians, right? Okay, the friends, friends of the library. And okay, so you said parents? Yeah, like parents and guardians. Okay. thinking of that I'd love to see us and I know we've done some work with them I know Kelly I think you've done some work with them as schools mm -hmm. I would love to see us really all of our branches mm -hmm. and maybe even I know we've done a, a lot of focus on um, children mm -hmm. you know and rightfully so, we should. But I'm thinking, wouldn't it be neat to do a focus? And I think it's there is kind of a focus on um, the older population, the white haired <laughs> <laughs> population. Um, that it might be, you know, I think that population, especially here in Goochland, is really growing. You know, we've got um, several different uh, over 55 communities and that kind of thing that are coming into the into the county. So it might be a good idea to think of, of, you know, focusing some with that group too. So I'll just put older adults. I won't put. Well, I think a lot of those folks also attend some of the um, programs. Yes, don't they? they do. Yeah, like Bridge yeah, you've got and Mahjong. Some, and some, yeah, we've got some really good programs. New programs for those. So program attendees in general of all different programs, I think, could be. Okay, staff obviously needs to be another group. And I think um, so here the team team group I think is yes yeah we have teen advisory boards yeah that would be so that would good. Be good they could easily provide I think another one might be the um, maybe the government at each each of our divisions, you know, the, I guess the boards of supervisors or the, um, you know, that I don't know that we'll have programs for them, but they might have suggestions of things that, I don't know, I'm, I'm asking <laughs> before I put it down. I think it's, it's a good idea to ask them to, if they'd like to be involved. Like maybe Parks and Rec. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that would be good. I was also thinking about the YMCA. Mm -hmm. Because they have so many 
Do the, does the Y ever bring kids over here during their programs at all, or is, do they all do fitness? Um, not usually. Not usually. Not but usually. I just wonder if they ever brought the kids over on a rainy day or something. Mm -hmm. No, not not usually. We do supply books for them during summer reading program and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, when they have Maybe kids we there all summer. Involved. Um, who else did that? Had I put down? Should do. Um, Daycares and preschools. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. Okay. You'll probably do college. Because we have right, we have well, and yeah, we have Randolph Macon and Ashland, mm -hmm. so college students. That's really. a good one. Or like new new adult, eighteen to twenty two. They're usually left out of things. <laughs> How do we solicit these people? How do we get them? Well, the teens. We make we have teen advisory council. But if we want to get people from, for example, the colleges. Yeah. Well, we I know Ashland has a relationship with Randolph Macon. And I think, do you all have a Jay relationship Sarge. with the community college? Um, a little bit. We used to have it more with the library when that was open to the public. We had a lot of back and forth with them, but not as what? much now. They don't have as many people as they used yeah. to. No, I know. And, yeah. And, yeah, great number. When did they close the library to the public? It's from COVID. Oh. And they never reopened it. I mean, I, I used to use the library too. Can you think of any other any other groups? How about Coachland Cares? We got okay, maybe we ought to put it as local local outreach or local yeah, could you know, we've got that here in Goochland, but there are oh, I'm sorry, other places that yeah. don't have something. I don't. I imagine they have like social services, community yes. boards, CSS, and um, community services boards, yeah, and community. all of yeah, those CSS places. Would be good. Mm -hmm. Adult ID population. They use that a lot. I put DSS and social services. I think um, care I mean, a lot of those organizations sort of already tend to have their own constraints. Yes. Um, transportation is a big one. Yeah. Their um, client base is not necessarily very homogenous. <clears throat> I mean, I think those opportunities are fairly limited. Um, yeah, I think the most um, we would be able to work with them like through a survey or something. And more and, than yeah, more so than like having them come to meetings or things like that. Right. Um, probably yeah. an overview from someone in charge or else asking them to participate in a survey that we had would be more how we would reach out to those groups. Yeah. That makes sense. That does make sense. Do because we want it's the to? same as me. Like if I I can't you know, I wouldn't have time to be on a bunch of other people's board, right? You know, or advisory boards or whatever. So, um, you know, they have their things and we have ours. But they're they've always been willing to participate with us in when we were building a plan in terms of um, surveys and that sort of thing. Good, good. How about businesses, local businesses? I'm just asking. I'm not saying we have to put it up there. I'm just, I'm thinking, you know, there, there may be, you know, some local businesses that would like to, I don't know. Well, as I think we move toward gathering, you know, libraries becoming more increasingly gathering spots for people, that there could be or businesses and organizations I think people are always looking for a good place for people to meet. I'd say the way to reach those people would probably be through the chamber. 
Commerce. There you go. So yeah. Maybe Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Okay. That's a great idea. if we can, you know, we think of other groups, we can put some more groups up there, but mm -hmm. I think we yeah. need to think in terms now of maybe if we have some people that we can identify at least to begin contacting them. Maybe that's that's the best way of, of looking at it, not a group, you know, forming their group, just some somebody or some position that we think we could contact. So when we contact somebody, let's say we call, and friends, let's say somebody's assigned, how does it work? Somebody's assigned to friends of the libraries, and then you call all of them, or? Just make a question. Yeah, we'd have to, I think we'll have to, at the end of this, we'll have to determine what we, you know, we as a group can do between now and the next time to make some contacts with these folks to see if they're, you know, they might be interested in working with us on something like this. I think the friends are a big group that we need to we need to get involved. We need to have friends of the libraries. I can even look at one. Peggy, are you at all interested? Peggy. Oh, you know I am always ready to put my two cents in. Well, what I'm saying is as our contact person to help us and you know, we can talk about it, but as our yes. contact person to help us get in touch with all of the friends groups. You know, so. And so when we call these groups, we're saying, would you like to be involved in creating a five-year plan for the PRL? I mean, is that what we're saying? Or, that, we, or are we saying, would you fill out a survey for us? Or would you, uh, how do we, what are we saying when we call these people up? What, what exactly is our goal? I think our goal is first of all to um, see if we can get a core group of that group that can be an advisory, um, work with us in the, as an advisory group. Um, it doesn't have to be a huge group, it could be two or three people. Okay. You know, in that, that core advisory group from there. But then. So we're talking about 13 advisory groups? At, well, we may, you know, like, I think. Staff, we've already, you know, we've already got representation. We, I, I didn't even put the board up here, but the, you know, we obviously will be sharing all of this with the board too. Um, so I don't. We, I go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, so we contact the people, and we say, okay, team advisory board, would you like to participate in a, creating a long range or five year plan for the PRL? And they say, uh, okay. And we say, then do we say, who would you like to be your representative so that we have one person that can take on the responsibility of attending the meetings if possible, or, or if not able to attend a meeting, able to disseminate the information and then get feedback? Is that, yeah, I think, is that kind of what we're talking about? I think about? the teens would be very difficult for them to come to meetings. Right. Um, I mean, they're in school, right. obviously. Right. And so I think with teen advisory boards, we could just get their input. Yeah. That then yeah. I, like, I could be the one to relay their input. Yeah. Perfect. Because I'm, yeah, That's I'm your in charge of youth <laughs> services. <laughs> so. so, but the point being that we'd have kind of one point person that was kind of the, the. Yeah, we had three teen advisory groups, so I'd have to. However you would think it best, or however you think best, because I guess we can't have one rule for everybody. I mean, every group is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And if you could get the, you know, corral them, and then we would... Um, they don't meet in the summer, so it's going to be... Well, one, of, one of the things that seems to be missing is, you know, what are you asking them to do, which mm -hmm. we haven't really figured out yet. Yeah, we haven't defined that yet. Yeah. You know, we've, it's a long way from here to West Point. 
-hmm. if you're really having advisory group meetings you know that's that is always a difficulty and how are you how are you scaling that across three now three counties and maybe and it's, nine branches right I mean maybe it's a too un, that's a little bit too unwieldy and we just I mean, have like a a good <coughs> survey to disseminate to get feedback well you, you might start you, you're, you might you might have like survey instruments that are more related to you know, a specific group, you know, the, I mean, like the YMCA is a pretty specific group on here that is a lot like DSS or the colleges in um, preschool kind of thing, depending on how you look at it. So, I mean, because, I mean, ideally you're trying, you're really trying to reach both users and non-users to find out a little, you know, like what, what's working and what's not working. Mm -hmm. um, if you're trying to survey people and say, well, like, what, what can we do for you? I think you're going to get a lot of disparate answers that are basically going to be unwieldy and not very workable because what are the resources that you have to do that? Yeah, the you know? questions have to be very... So you're, you're saying that the questions should be tailored to the group and not open-ended be very probably kind of I think I mean I think these are groups that you're you're saying you'd like to have some feedback with but having feedback from them is a little bit different than them being participants in the process which is a year-long process from what I'm understanding probably at least a year yeah you know I would think so so it's a little early on I think to be to be trying to to reach them at this point again uh, what do you, how are you going to do that with a team group? Um, if you're trying to reach, you know, DSS, CSB folks, is that, is that staff? Are you trying to reach their clients? Are they different than, you know, the human resources departments at the four, at the three counties? <laughs> um, which, I mean, you know, I mean, that's part of the reason we have the branch uh, Hanover's at Hanover Courthouse, and part of the reason why it opens at nine o'clock. But I can tell you that over the years that usage has um, declined um, because the people have a lot easier access to it. Um, I, it's Trish. I'm going to excuse oh, myself. Okay. For that. Sorry. So. Maybe what we need to do at this point is identify one person or one, it may, it may not be a name at this point, but like when he talked about um, the uh, DSS of social services, I, I think what we're trying to do is, and this is, again, this is me, you know, this is my opinion, so don't take it as the gospel, but I think we probably need to initially reach somebody who's in DSS, mm -hmm. uh, and then through them, how do we get to the constituents that you work with, you know, so that we can um, reach out to them for their input, you know, on this. But I think that we, you know, we need to have somebody that can help us as far as how, how to, who, help us identify maybe who we ought to be reaching out to um, and who, um, you know, what, what some of the input may, I'd love to see us, even if it's a matter of us taking, you know, two or three meeting times where we invite a couple of these groups in and say, okay, we need to, you know, we need to find out from you what specifically would work for you or if we, have some kind of a form that that group could fill out and say what are some of the things that you would like to see us try to try to do with your group um, you know what are some some suggestions from you I'm thinking like the um, some of the older population we've got in and I know in Hanover they've got um, at retirement homes you know we've got a great big retirement home um, that has just been just gone in and they, they've got like 3,000 residents already mm -hmm. you know and I could see where there would be things that we might be able to offer to them 
you know, or we might be able to get volunteers from them to help us, you know, with stuff. So, um, you know, I think they're, I think it's a two-way street. I think we ought to, it's a, well, I think realistically, it's going to take probably a good, what is this, June? I don't think much is going to happen over the summer in terms of this. I think we can yeah. begin. But I think it's going to take probably a good six months just to kind of coalesce the groups, the people, and then what we're going to ask them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it. I think we can work over the summer, but I think that we, yeah. you know, we've got to understand that it's. Yeah, it's not going to be as easy to pull people together. We need to know what we want from them first right. of all, right? Yeah. And then, um, and then how we want to get that from them, whether it's via a survey or whether we want to. I mean, it might make sense to invite several groups to one meeting. Yes, that might be something that could happen, versus having. Separate meetings for each. Separate other. meetings for each, uh, which gets cumbersome for, you know, the people you're asking to help you. Yeah. Well, and I think I think the nature of some of these groups is going to be more electronic communication anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree teams. with that. And mm -hmm. I think the um, the well, the elders correctly are going to have. They won't necessarily communicate electronically, but. We'll have to go to them, maybe, we or they'll to have the, to. Yeah, you know, we'll have to just give them a paper survey kind of thing, or no, or an electronic one. But I don't. I mean, what do you, what's your thought? I mean, do most of them pretty electronically savvy seniors? Or? Um, it depends on the age of the senior. It yes. is our, our age. We still we've got some technology mm -hmm. knowledge, not. Mm -hmm. Nowhere near my grandchildren's knowledge, but they, you know, it's some knowledge. Yeah, you can. But I have a friend um, that they've moved into the um, Avery Point, mm -hmm. which is a retirement community, and they're in their 80s. Well, she, I mean, there's <laughs> yeah, so many people. I, I can barely text her. You know? Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's where, um, and I don't know if this will ever be resurrected, but do you think that a a bookmobile going to a senior community would be effective at all? I Hard to say. I, yeah, I, I think there are other ways probably to do that now. You know, I mean, I know we talked about the, um, the book vending, that sort of thing. That might be more effective than... How does that I mean? Like, you have a machine there at the community with Books in it? Effectively or? like a red box. Mm -hmm. but like a red for, box. For public library. You mm -hmm. you know, you walk up, you scan your card, you know, it asks what, your ask book. you what well, it, it can be it might be like an open collection or it might be like a holds pickup kind of a thing. Like do you want to pick up the item that is on hold for you? Some of them have more capacity. The 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 economics of any of that that is a that's a much more expensive way to provide service. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, you have infrastructure costs with the machine, and, and, and I'm kind of in my brain like same thing with the bookmobile, and that's one of the reasons why we did, did away with bookmobile service was the the cost basically per hour and the return on the investment for how many how many people you could see and how much how much material is being borrowed, because that's the primary metric. I, I just, I think that, and I'm only speaking about Goochland right now, only because we have this explosion of, of over 55 community back here with Reader's Branch and Mosaic and Avery Point, and I mean, there's thousands of people coming into the county, at the east end of the county, that I bet some of them don't even know this library exists, because they don't, they don't coming come out to the this. courthouse is way too far. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. too so far it seems to yes. me that's a rich environment for cultivating um, new members, and and I don't know um, how mobile they are. I would imagine if a good number of them are just in their late fifties, sixties, and such, they're still pretty mobile. But 
I mean, I have friends that live over there, and I see people walking their dogs, and they seem pretty vibrant. Uh -huh. But just saying that that, I think, is a, a group to tap into. So we don't need to go down that, any, that road any further. But uh, I think you're exactly right about we have to, we have to know what we want to get from mm -hmm. them first. Right. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that we start well, we can a start, survey? We can like cre start creating questions that that. Um, um, I I'm open. You know, I think we've identified a lot of good groups. I think that you know we you know we are looking at the fact that even if we do an advisory type group with that group, they we wouldn't depend on them being here every every meeting. You know, by any matter of means, but I think you're right. I think we do need to know what we want from them and what are the possibilities of, that they might want from us. You know, so I think maybe that might be the next thing we need to do is talk a little bit about what we. I'll, I'll sit back down because we can do it. I can do it. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, so do we want to start kind of listing out what we would like from them, what kinds of things, you know, we would expect, you know, from if we engage these folks? Like survey questions, do you that wanna, type of thing? Right. I, I would probably recommend that we go back to Orange Boy and ask them for some assistance with questions. They they do surveys pretty much all the time and have a pretty good idea of questions that that work better to help. You know, even if we were able to just provide a list and you could take a look at some of those to get a sense of how that. That's what I was going to ask. Do they have? Some of these actually have their survey, you know, like this one has, um, this is Appomattox, and it has their survey questions in the back of it. But not all of them do. And I've looked at some that are online that I didn't print, but, um, you know. They, Appomattox also works with Orange Boy. Oh, do they? So, well, that, that makes sense then. All right. Well, in that case, if we're talking about working with Orange Boy on this, are, what level of input are we looking at from Orange Boy? What level did you all use them the last time? Um, a fairly complete level throughout the process, survey and analysis. The survey and analysis, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. I think that I don't want them to put our plan together. I, the ones that I have seen that have been put together by a company sometimes don't look like they're well, in real the, workable right, in the in, end. I mean, in, in a normal process, I will say that staff normally have a heavy involvement before it goes to the board um, to, to shape it and, you know, to, they have we put the time in basically. Um, it, you, the board will have to put in a lot of time if, in shaping that. But um, I think you know as you learn as you learn how the you know what what the results are kind of of whatever survey you're doing, how that develops, and then trying to figure out how to kind of streamline that. There. They're really, they're going to be much more effective at the data collection than, than we were. Uh, and I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I just, again, like I said, I, I think that the ultimate end product, I think that, you know, I would like to see us put, have more input than some of these had from their companies. You know, it's obvious that the company kind of took it over. So, um... How does it work when you go to Orange Boy and say, well, we would like to create a five-year plan or perhaps a rolling plan. These are the kind of groups that we're going to tap into. We'd like to get their feedback. And then they present you with 
survey questions or sample We survey? have an ongoing relationship, so I think that they would be willing to provide me with the questions now. If we're asking, in effect, we'd be asking them for a proposal mm -hmm. to, you know, to do what you're, whatever you're defining, you know, in the process. Right, right. And um, I'm guessing that we probably, we probably might need to do an RFP for the services. Yeah, right. The, I think that we spent closer to, I'm going to say closer to 10 last time, but it was long enough ago that I'm guessing it would be 20. I don't, I don't really know without asking. Yeah, I know. I remember the numbers that it said something was just three to 5,000. Was that just a, the survey? And then the whole, I don't The analysis of the survey. I, was probably I don't know. I don't have that. Remember. Remember. It, was, it was something so. I read and I just, those numbers stuck in my head. Yeah. Um, by RFP, do you mean reaching out to other vendors as well? Like well, getting an RFP multiple bids? is in 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 the government world. You you would post that, and interested companies respond. Right. Okay. Uh, if you know you you may not get anyone else to respond. You, you know, Are there other to... groups? I mean, who else does this besides Orange Boy um, that you're aware of? So, like in the library world, sometimes the library automation company has that as a service that they can do because they have you know, they, own, they, they kind of own the physical database that all of your card holders are in mm. as it is um, so, so they've seen that and Cersei particularly has sort of tried to copy what Orange Boy does it's gaining you know, it's a little bit of a market share mm -hmm. um, they're their product really isn't as good as what Orange Boy does, but you know you gotta go with the RFP process when mm -hmm. you're identifying who you want to go with. I was trying to find the name. There were a couple of these that listed the name of their company that they had used, um, but I don't see it. On so this we would one. just post an RFP on the PRO website. Is that how it works generally? How do you how do you get that it out there? We would have to work with. Hanover's yeah, purchasing department. Yeah. Oh, Hanover's purchasing. It okay. would likely go on to the state's purchasing site. Gotcha. That's the general process. Well, are we ready to to do something like that? You think? I think we need to. Yes, I think we need to be. That's one outlet. Then we've got to think of other tools besides just surveys that we would use um, to collect data. Um, I know um, basically what we're talking about with the different groups is focus groups, you know, to go and sit down with the different groups and, and talk with them about what are some of the things that, you know, they might be looking for with the understanding that, you know, it's not, if we're sitting here and asking you about it, doesn't mean it's going to happen. It means that we're, we're collecting information about what are some possibilities. Um, and <clears throat> what were some of the other um, interviews? It was another thing that I had seen on some of these. Um, and then researching other libraries. ID, ID best practices related to the library of the future. Um, that's what I had put down. So I think that, you know, I, I, I don't think we had to limit it to just a survey. I think there needs to be I like, several different. I like going in and just, okay, so I'll, once again, I have to see in, in my mind how, what this would look like. And that is that, so we have a survey, but then we'd go speak to, let's say we, posted or with the teen group or friends groups that we let them know that at such a, a point in day and time and location we would like all interested parties just to come and let's just talk about the vision of the library for the next five years but and I then think whoever shows up I, that, think, I think we need to do it based on the groups I, I that's what that, I mean yeah. like let's say we're talking to the friends groups yeah and then does that mean that one or two of us or somebody from this group kind of runs a focus group and just whoever shows up 
we start taking notes. And we depend on, you know, somebody that, you know, within the friends group that can make those contacts with the different, you know, friends groups throughout the... Um, to alert them that this is happening. This is happening, and we would really like input, you know, from the... Um, from groups so that, and it doesn't mean that we have to have 50 people. I mean, we can have five people and we can get, you know, good information. So. Um, or at a friends group meeting, there could be maybe, instead of having an extra meeting, and you know, I'm not in favor. I think you could just, just get add on the it, agenda. Add the friend, on the friends meetings, yeah. just have on the agenda. Yeah, right? and Each then one. Um, a member of this group or just like the branch manager from that, um, Friends group could ask questions of the um, of the group because they're, they're already meeting. They, we know they're already interested parties, right. and then we just say, "Can we have 15 minutes of your time to to brainstorm?" Yeah, we've, we've got some of these groups that that I, I agree with you. Friends, I think that would that would work very well to do it that way. But I think there's some of the groups we're going to have to um, we are going to have to initiate that actual gathering and we're going to have to you know direct that gathering and I'm thinking you know like I said with our and I, I don't know what Hanover situation or King William situations are with um, with the um, older population in their communities um, I think we've got we've got a unique situation here in Goochland that we that's a that's an audience we really do need to talk to um, I don't know if that's the case, and I just I don't know about Hanover. You know, we don't have any Hanover. Hanover people. has more people in those kinds of um, living arrangements than Goochland does. Oh, I'm sure they do. We just I it, think, it just all of a sudden exploded <clears throat> in Goochland. I mean, I, again, I think what I'm kind of hearing, like like the idea that you you you're sure that that's you know, a target-rich environment. I think it's I think it's too early in the process to to know that. I mean, I think that's what you're trying to figure out because you want to. I think you're trying to figure out what what are the common needs that people have that we're not, and how are we not able to serve them now? Is it that you know? Every I'm making it up. Everybody that lives in the over 55 housing uses a library, they're just not using this one. Or it's not a need. They don't have transportation. Um, whatever, you know, whatever the um, challenge to that is. And then is that something that we're able to devote resources to right. and serve? So I, when we had the meeting in April, there were the, the other library plans, but there was also the, um, the Iowa State, right. you know, roadmap kind of a piece, and I guess I'm not, are we, are we loosely following that? Because I'm kind of lost where we might be if that's what we're doing. We're, it's, it, we're brainstorming. Yeah, we're okay. loosely following it, but in the sense of, what I, I think my goal by the end of today was to um, come up with some kind of a timeline as to how, you know, how far out do we need to go with our timeline and during that timeline what are some of the, the major things that we need to be addressing so that we can get there. And um, we may be getting too much in the weeds right now with the groups, um, but I think that you know, once we've got a time, you know, like one of the things on the timeline, as I said on the agenda, the next month focus would be on um, the PRL vision and mission and work on, on the different tools that we might use. So, you know, we're, we're trying to get the parts and pieces that are going to be needed in order to get an end product and put them in a timeline as to how we're going to use them so we can get there. Well, so we identify the groups, which we've done, we've started that, um, with the intention to identify perhaps 
one individual who might be a point of contact. Point of contact. But truly, we can't go a whole lot further until we have the vision and mission. Is that, is that fair to say? Will the vision and mission determine the content of our survey? It will. But we're not, that's why vision and minute, mission is the, the, next, the next thing. thing that so we, we, work we on. identify the groups, the point people of the group. So that's a homework for this month. Stop me if I'm wrong. I'm just trying to, I like to have real well defined tasks because otherwise it turns into a blur and I forget it. You know. <laughs> I move on to the next thing. Um, so we do that. And then, in July, kind of a vision and mission start to gel. And from that, we would contact Orange Boy. Does that make sense? Are we ready to contact them, do you think? Because we have a relationship with them? Or do we have to? Well, we have to do an RFP. Right, you know, because right. We have it's not that we can't have contact, and I think that they probably are a valuable resource just to give us a little feedback and guidance on how how to do some of this stuff. I think, I mean, I think throughout the throughout the process, you might want to you might want to have opportunities for the public to provide input um, as. You know, as, Bob, as you've mentioned, you know, it's still sort of the board's responsibility to take the input and figure something out. But like, like with the vision, with the mission, you don't want to start with the blank whiteboard in your 15 minutes with the, the yeah. friends of the Goochel Library. Well, just, I mean, what, <laughs> you know. what, what you said is, is spot on. We have to be very clear about what we want to get from these people, what we're going to ask them what information we'd like to get from them. That's why I think we have to be very clear about our vision and mission for the next five years. I'm just kind of, you know, brainstorming here because I'm just thinking out loud. And if I'm wrong, I mean, tell me, I, I don't know, but I like to be real clear about what we're trying to do. So, so if we're, and I agree with you, but I also think that we've got to have a, the big picture of how we're going to get to here. Right. We've got to know, you know, we've got some steps we've identified already. We've identified that we need to um, work with Orange Boy, we, you know, to help us identify some questions. We talked about some of the other tools that we might want to use to collect data. Once we collect all the data and we get all the you know, analysis back from Orange Boy, then we've got to look at how do we define which goals we're going to do and which ones we're not going to do, and how do we lay them out. So again, like I said, in, in the project management world, the key to all of this is making sure that we've got a plan laid out as to how we're going to get it all done, and get it all done and get this done by this point. You know, if we if we say, oh, well, next month we'll work on vision and mission, you know, maybe three years from now before we finally get to a point of doing it, that's why I'm saying, that, you know, I think that, I think all of this is very important. I'm not saying that, but I'm also saying it's important to have it laid out in a timeline as to how we're going to do this so that we're not spinning our wheels. Okay. So building a project timeline is that like a 12 month thing? 12 months at a time? That's, that's what we've got to figure out. How many, you know, we can start with 12 months and then we might go, oh my gosh, there's no way we can get this all done in 12 months. I was going to say that yeah. that plan itself need, will need to be a living plan yes. as you're moving yes, through it exactly. to see if you're going to target. And, and, you know, things are going to change. You know, if, you, if Orange Boy can't help us until September, that bumps us back, you know, with, and so we've got to look at you know, how, how things are going to fit together, so. But I think we need to have a broad, overarching,
plan started today to so that we can begin to say okay in order to get to here with the with the survey we've got to have these steps that we're going to do and we'll do this step this month and this step this month okay you know um, so and and it, it it feels like we're just kind of blowing in the wind right now but we're not we truly aren't we're coming up with a lot of the things that we need to be thinking about and we need to get on a plan in order but we've got to we we have to start someplace yeah so well and all these things that Iowa State has in here and they you know they're they've kind of got it in the timeline but we still have to make it our timeline well, we should probably make a list of what we want in the timeline like and then we put that in the timeline. then we can you know put I mean? the charts out like, and we can start oh, saying boy. okay yeah yeah so and a problem like i work best from a deadline back so yes this is always deadline yeah and then plan it. i i agree okay so why don't we um why don't we start making a list of those things that we know that we need to do And this is just a dump it on the, on the chart, things that we need to do, okay? So we need to build a survey, right? And under that, we know we're going to have contact Orange Boy. Now, do we contact Orange Boy? Before we put out an RFP, or because we, we, because we have relationships, I, I, I think it. I think it depends what we're contacting them for in some ways as well. Yeah. So uh, I think at this point, um, things are loose enough that we were. The reason for contacting them is trying to better define what we're doing. So, okay. Okay, so what we're contacting them for is to define how we But when we reach out to them, we've got to have already defined right. what we want to ask them. <laughs> I, th I mean, I think one of the things that you want, in terms of sort of IDing users, is you, you, you might want to start with who are the current users, How, you know. I, I, will, I will use the public computers, um, you know, do we have, and we do have thousands of uses of the computers every year, but that's a metric that's been dropping for several years versus other metrics that are increasing, and what does that, what does that tell you about how mm -hmm. to plan? Mm -hmm. What do you attribute that to? Just more Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, everybody has a, everybody has a computer in their pocket mm -hmm. these days. It's 
not as important to come to the library to check your email as it used to be. Mm -hmm. We need to define, begin to define some of the tools that we might use. Put it on a piece of paper because we may have more user stuff up there. already got one of them right here. <laughs> so this is actually for over here survey. Okay. Um, we we talked about possible focus groups with some of our user IDs. Now, focus groups would be in addition to surveys? Yes. Okay. I, th I think we need to do, you know, another thing I, I think I saw in several of them, they did specific interviews with people, too. You know, they identified, I, I'm not quite sure, I don't remember how they identified who they were going to interview. You know, it's a... Uh, some of the other things were that I, that I saw. Research, doing research on other libraries. Well, also, I wonder, can we um, just go talk to groups? In other words, like, um, for, I'm thinking of Avery Point and those places. When they have their, um, when they have their housing meeting, what's it called? Like an HOA. Yes, yeah. thank you. When they have those meetings and people show up, I wonder if, because you've got a contained residence that you could just say, this is what we're doing, and if you're interested, we have this survey we'd like to fill out kind of thing. Yeah, or, I, you know, or, or just have a, yeah. you know, 15 minutes of just brainstorming what people would like to see. That, see, I'm all in favor of utilizing the time when people are already gathered and just kind of injecting ourselves in there for 15 minutes um, if that's possible if they will allow it and you know, I guess that's kind of part of the focus groups is just going and, and allowing people to just share their opinions um, even though that may not be the focus of the meeting to say well we have these our special guests tonight are going to be the library folks and they'd like to get your thoughts kind of and just see what happens. You know, something like that would definitely work like with friends, you know, that it's something that you know, we well, meetings that are already convened and that we just right. kind of show up and already scheduled meetings. Yeah. Right. And then if you just have a survey for people at the just sitting out for people to pick up at the library, would they do that thing? Mm -hmm. I mean, they just pick it up while they mm -hmm. I mean, just have users. More people do it in via 
you know, electronically. Yeah. But um, but some will do it. You know, if you have staff asking people to do it, they will do it. And we there's a user database, right? I mean, do you have email a email user database that you can use to all the library card well, that's holders? How, that's how the surveying is done. Mm -hmm. I mean, like that's with, how you with Orange normally Boy. do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I mean, versus like us sending it, to, like trying to download those email addresses. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, I figured that there was already a discrete database, but well, I just figured but, that that's allowable to send out surveys to those people. But, and but, well, doing that, Orange Boy has the tools to be able to do that in a way so that the emails actually go through. That you know, like if, if we were to send them from Janet's email, the libraries email domain would be identified as spam in the email world and then we'd have problems with our emails not going places. But with Orange Boy, you know, they can send the survey multiple times, but they can do it in a way that is smart because they will know who has responded. So they're not mm -hmm. asking people multiple times. And the messages can change to say, you know, hey there, we noticed you. Mm -hmm. You left this item in your cart, <laughs> you know, all the same kind of technology. Mm -hmm. That's the, that is a, a huge benefit of having That's an outside they, partner, yeah. you know, yeah. sorry, with that technology. Uh, but yes, yeah, so that's that's why the um, electronic surveying is, is the easiest, best, you know, oh, cheapest yeah. way to, to reach people. Well, I mean, uh, the obvious things that come to mind, I mean, yes, people will fill it out, but someone else is going to have to likely input it in so that the data is all together. You can, depending on what the questions are, like if you're asking them to, you know, a text box and sort of fill that out, well, if it's handwritten. And can you send those <laughs> kinds of things to Orange Boy? Can you scan those paper surveys and send them to them? Or will they only accept a part of... A survey. That's not a service that, that they offered previously. I, I, I don't know how they would be doing that either. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I, again, if a human, if it, my point being, if you can't read the person's handwriting, mm -hmm. the machine's probably not going to do a better job. Right. So, uh, you know, check boxes, rankings, those kinds of things, probably a lot easier to do. But surveying is the electronic surveying is the best bang for your buck. Probably I just want to be able to capture the people that can't or don't use, won't do an electronic survey. I don't want to leave them in the dust. So, just a thought. And we may run into that with a, you know, when we're talking about senior citizens. Well, and also, you know, Western Goochland with so bad internet. Okay, get, get a no, do you all have Firefly yet? No. No. Yeah, see that? that yeah. I have Starlink. You have Starlink? Yeah. Yeah, that's, how do you like it? It's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty good, right? I've heard that. So, anyway, I just, um, Okay, so. Okay, um, what are some other parts and pieces that, you know, we're talking a lot about gathering the data, so, um, and we're not defining what we're gathering yet. We're not doing that, we're not quite at that point, but we need to talk about other things that we would need to do. This is, this is all kind of getting, getting the data. When we, once we get the data, then, um, acquire the data. Then we've got a, and Orange Boy will help us. Um, they, I know they'll do percentages and um, you know, do numbers, which is a simple way to do it. But what else will they do with the data for us? Um, I, I mean, I would, I would say sort of help us identify the, you know, the commonalities. Okay. And probably a bit of the statistical analysis so that when you're looking at it, it's already kind of 
you know, ranked, whether sort of so you don't use an anecdotal response and and give it a greater weight than it is because it hits home with what you're already believing, you what your bias already is, and you know it's one of it's the only response you had like that of you know four thousand. And we will get those kind, yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 So. Okay, so once we acquire the data, we, we will have um, Orange Boy. I'm going to put it down here because it's kind of hard to read it up there. For this analysis. Now, C's. And then once we get that data, then we need to need to look for trends. You know, the um, things that are there things that we want to step outside the box and try to do, or are they, you know, you know, we we when we did our brainstorming last time, we had some you know some ideas that we hadn't used before, and so um, or haven't used recently anyway that we can um, they'll do the, the initial analysis but from that data then we've got to determine how we want to use it. Okay, I'm just going to put look for trends, etc. where we start working on beginning to set some goals of things that we might do. And once we find the goals, then we've got to look at the goals from the perspective of, is this a goal that we do you know, one year and it's done, or is this a goal that we start and then we build on it? You know, so. so where does mission and vision factor yeah. in? Pardon? Where does mission and vision factor in? Yeah. Okay. Up here. <laughs> I didn't even put it in. You're right. But we'll put, but you, you, you start with the mission and vision, but then when you get all this data, won't it likely change? It could. It absolutely could. You know, it... it so that that's part of the analysis is to, to make sure that we're sure, actually make sure that mission and that vision what we is still think is our applied. mission and vision is really the yeah. mission and vision based on what we got back from data. Yeah. It doesn't that really change the goals versus your mission and vision? Pardon? Doesn't that really change your goals? Maybe the data might change your goals, but you it know, wouldn't really change your mission and vision, would it? Well I was always told years ago when I was working in project management that your your mission and your vision don't change. But absolutely every single thing I've read here, they talk about how your mission and your vision and your vision evolved. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that is not what I was told. <laughs> so but so yes. I, I well maybe the mission and the vision don't change, it's just how to get there yeah. that changes the methods that you these actually, you know, the things that I've been reading indicate that, that that's a normal uh, process of things, your mission and your vision could, can very well change, usually not drastically. I think that's the, the difference is that, you know, if it changes drastically, your whole company or your whole focus of your whatever it is you're doing changes, you know, you're no longer the same company. So, but yeah, I was always taught that too. Hey, we're no longer trying to serve people in four counties. It's changed to three. So I mean, that's sort of a simple, a simple look at it, analogy, but, but exactly. Yeah, how this, how it could work that we have to change something. Yeah. Okay. 
So at this point, once we get the data, we'll begin to define, and I want to put just high level goals at this point because then we'll break it down into more workable. When you start doing, you know, this this high level goal really is going to take three different goals to get there. Uh, type of thing. That's why I'm saying go down more precise. Okay. Um, and then we've got to talk in terms of do we go back to these people that we the focus group, and I'm asking this, do we go back to the focus groups then, or the small groups, or the point person that we've got for each of those groups and say, okay, are we, have we addressed some of your needs? I mean, are we, do we go back to them and before we etch any of this in stone, or do we? I don't think it hurts to have it as a draft. I mean, we had a pretty good idea of that. Um, I mean, part of like I mean, part of all of this is the initial gathering, acquiring the the data, so that we understand, you know, where we're at on various factors. Um, one of I mean, funding is is one. Library square footage is another that okay. come to mind in terms of you know how. How are we doing with that? How are we benchmarking? Um, the square, like square footage in standards for Virginia Public Libraries, six tenths of a square foot per capita has been the number for a long time. Um, thousands, hundreds, I don't know, of people have moved into your over 55. Mm -hmm. Our square footage in the Goochland branch has not changed for several years, and that was just the addition of a couple hundred square feet. And I, I mean, I, so I think that's one of the things that we really should be doing on the initial part is getting this better understanding of where we're at. That's what the, that's part of what the um, the one with the color graph of that's. The process in here is sort of telling you to do that. Planning for Library of Excellence has the standards piece. From my memory, having run this not too long ago, we're at like five tenths of a square foot. And as we go through this process, you know, you're, I'm, just, I'm just really picking and choosing things that I've heard said, but. Like, oh, this idea that the library is a community meeting space. Where do we expect people to meet if we don't have the square footage for meeting spaces? Mm -hmm. um, all, of, all of those kind of fit in, because then I think you're trying to get, you're trying to get feedback. Like, I mean, my concern, trying to serve different populations, that are not coming to the branch, I and mean, you're figuring out how to reach them. If you're using staff to reach them, do we have do we have that in our budget to be able to fund those? You know, I mean, you, it, it all it all kind of builds mm -hmm. together when you're when you're doing that. So you kind of you want to have that better understanding, I think, of where you're at today and what are those things that you're 
in tourism. You're, you know, intuiting that that's a, a good uh, area to focus on, 55 and up. Do we, and I, I, do we ever, do we ever do any kind of funding beyond the, the counties? I mean, do we do grant funding? I know we do some grants, I'm not saying that, but if we, if we came up with, uh, during this process came, you know, we had, you know, four or five of the different focus groups that said, we really want to do this. You know, we'd love to see you do this. And it's something that's out of our purview at this point based on our challenges. Is that something that, you know, we as, a, uh, as an entity can search out other funding sources? And I'm just asking. I don't, um, I don't know. You've, we've got we've got two people doing like all of the business function pieces, in you know in the office, and we've talked about not having enough staffing, right kind of staffing for that already with the audit. So my I mean, yes, you can if that's you know if you're identifying that as something to do, then identify that as something that you need that you need to, to fund. fund. Right. Um, the the real challenge with that is that generally. Continue People who are doing grants are not trying to provide the regular funding to keep your lights on. And you know, what is what is new and different about whatever you're trying to do? They wanna they want they want to sort of, you know, do something new and exciting, not not the same old. So there are there are opportunities for that. Um, but like um, I'm Somebody might give you money to help fund staffing to service the book vending machine for the first year. <clears throat> That's why, yeah, I was going to say, when you come up with a project, you got to have the, yeah, you got to have a way to continue mm -hmm. that or train your people down the road, you know, that, it, you know, that's a position that we need to then you know, go back to the divisions and say, you know, we have discovered that this is an excellent outreach for us and we're getting, you know, if we can show them, you know, this is... I mean, I would say, I mean, depending on what your priorities become out of some of the process and other things, you, you might be able to self-fund some of those things initially using money from the reserve. But it eventually, it needs to come. Eventually, back it's got to come back to make operating. I mean, that's operating. you know, that's the process in terms of how are we, how are we paying to rent the administrative offices or lease them? We're using the reserve fund to do that in the short term, so that we could work towards getting a different option, purchasing. Um, that may be something you do, that may not be something you do. Um, but that's kind of all, all of those things are kind of in the juggle of you know, things that are, are up in the air as we go through the process to try to figure that out. Okay, so I, can I, I'm gonna put up here possible, uh, possible initial grant funding for new ideas or something, you know, something to that effect. And it doesn't mean that it's going to happen, but it means that we've thought about it. So. I will, I will point out, I'm going back to the census information that was presented to the board at the August meeting, um, but like according to that, the person 65 and over, which is their measurement, um, 
Goochland is nearly 25%, 24.9. King William is 17.1, and Hanover is 19.4. So there's, yeah, you know, Hanover's got a much younger, well, a much larger population, but a much younger core population than we do. I know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Goochland. So, okay. Um, All right, I'm not going to write it down, but I know that we've got from, you know, once we gather the data, then it's going to be a matter of having that time to, to get our information put together in the actual plan. Um, I think that that's, this gives us a start for trying to put together a timeline. I'm looking at the time <laughs> and thinking, oh, yeah. I don't know, I, 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 what I'd like to do is take a shot at this. Um, I'll take these home, and I will take a shot at putting them like in a count, you know, that month one we do this, month two we'll do this, month three, and then see how things begin to impact, you know, each other as to, you know, make sure that we don't have any, we're not setting something up to fail because we know we don't have the personnel to work on it because we've already put them up here, <laughs> you know, to work on this, so, but I will be happy to and I'll take this home and try to put it together with a... Is there anything that we should be doing um, between now and... Between, um, um, what I'd thing? love for you to do, um, and I will send these out to you, I, I did some research just on the counties to get um, ideas of the vision and mission for our three counties. Um, and, which I thought was interesting. Goochlands was the hardest to find. I did finally find it, but it was the hardest one to find. Hanover's was the easiest to find. And King Williams was... And these are vision and mission for the libraries? For, no, these are for the, for the for counties. counties. And because if we're working on ours, we need to make sure we fit into part of what our our jurisdictions are doing so I can I'll send these out to you all. Thank you. Not, yeah, I've already I've got that. So um, I would love for everyone to have a chance to read through these these documents. Okay. Okay. So there's three and Tom here Davis, and then plus yeah. the one that you've got. Okay. Just yeah. sure. so, so I mean these. Sorry, these two are both documents that you would use to do sort of that evaluation of where you are yeah, today. That's the one that I you know. that goes through with the one star, the two star, and the three star. Okay. And we from that we ought to begin to look at you said basically we're at the one star on most of this, right? Um I, no, i I mean I've, we've not done this this process. In, in the LBA one. Oh, okay, because I did. I, I went through that and tried to tried to figure out where we are. The, the one with the green is one that the Virginia Library Directors Association put together. Okay. And I went through and scored it us on this one, and we I did we not, didn't score. I well. did not score as high enough to be bronze. Okay. So it might be good for each of us to. I, I don't know if there's some of these I may not be able to score because I don't have enough knowledge on, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on with some of the internal parts and pieces. But if you can definitely. It's actually four documents then. It's the um, Virginia Public Libraries. This is this is very good, actually. I think it had a lot of and, and a lot of ways that you can grow. You know that. You know you may start out that you're that you're at a one star, but you know if you really want to achieve a two star, this is what you got to do. So. It's ease. It's not stars. It's ease. Okay. But, yeah. So, but that that is that's very good. And like I said, I did not have a chance to read these last two that you have given us. 
This one. Oh, the, the white one is the white one is the same as the white one. You, one, oh. one you had, and one is for me today. I thought I printed the different one. So, that, so it's planning now. Strategic planning with the in this one, with these three. Oh, you sent us a. It was a. This is just a. Uh, that's a page record. that's linking to. I think the is at the bottom. Gotcha. That link has been okay. changed. Okay, on, I was going to um, say. On I, that, yeah. Um, to look directly to the document, and the this is meant to be a handbook to working with this. They, they, they go together as Got part it. of the planning process. Okay. Okay. So homework next time is to read through these documents um, and that to I will send you the, um, the vision and mission, mission and vision statements from the three divisions so you can see okay. those. And then um, we need to look at our mission, uh, vision and mission statements, which you can find on our um, our previous long-range plan that we have the mission statement on several things that we publish, but the vision I, I finally found <laughs> on this one. So, but we do need to we do need to work on that. And then what we will do is I will try to put together the timeline, and next time we need to really take a look at the timeline. And in the meantime, can you contact Orange Boy for us and see if they they can give us you know a little bit of their wisdom and guidance as to you know moving forward what we need to do? They have a good website that kind of explains, as I recall, that kind of explains what they do too. Just I may be able to find the previous survey. Um. I might even have it from. I think when, when I first joined the, uh, the trustees, I may, you may have, because we went through this, it was right at the end of We've it. We've touched that multiple times since yeah. so, Oh, I'm sure you did, but it, when I came on, it was right at the end of it. <laughs> That's yeah. why I was saying, you know. For the um, draft timeline you're creating, are, you can, do, are we just going to do that when, at the next meeting, or are you going to email it to us? I can email it to okay. you. Yeah, I'll put that together and email it to you, so you can take a look at it. Um, you want like provide first provide feedback. Yes. At the next meeting. Okay. Yes, absolutely. And then um, we'll we'll approve the minutes from this meeting from last meeting, and and um, Kelly has taken the minutes for us for this one. So yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much for doing that. Okay, um, let me look and see if I've got any other things I had on here. Um, that's, that's pretty much it at this point um, that I think the next time we will have, have a little bit more structure to what we're looking at, and that might make you a little happier. <laughs> well, thank you. This was just... A brainstorm session. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks for having the pages. I, um, for what it's worth, I will be in the northern Minnesota woods on July 10th. No internet access. <laughs> I'm delighted to say. All kinds of excuses. All kinds of